Okay, good morning. So we left off yesterday um, with a couple of games against the Wardens. Uh, they got us in a one, I think a one nothing game. Again, the game wardens are trying to climb out of the cellar, and we are trying to hold on to the uh, opportunity to play in the league championship. The Dice Fantastics are uh, just uh, one and a half games back. Call of Cthulhu is hovering there. The Norsemen, a um, couple of games below 500, and then the game wardens there at 9 and 12, tied with the newbie nightmares and the rules lawyers. Um, the game wardens with a plus 10 run differential, uh, that screams that they should be in the top three. So we'll see if the game wardens can get there by the end of the season. Our team's doing great. Um, we have uh, won a few, lost a few here in the recent. Some of it simmed, some of it played. But I'm going to go ahead. I feel it's time to increase my difficulty again one more time. So we're going to kick our ego up to 33 now. So uh, I started at 28. We came out looking pretty good. I think we were 6 and 1 before I decided to tweak up the difficulty to 30. And now we're going to kick it up to 33, which would be uh, 34 would be the highest I probably would ever go. Let's just do it. Let's just go to 34. I have tried beyond 34 before, and it's just no fun. It's uh, I'm not good enough, and at my age and in the amount of time I play video games, I'll never get good enough to really uh, have fun and be competitive beyond 34. So I'll go to the highest I really have ever succeeded at. We're going to go all the way up to Ego 34. And uh, this may drastically affect the chances that our team can... Uh, get to the next, uh, get to the championship. That's four points. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a big deal. So let's go ahead and play against the Game Wardens. This time we're facing uh, Landu Shields, and uh, again, our, our top pitcher, 4-0 with a 2.4 ERA, uh, is Chesley Beal, and he uh, will be starting. Let's see what the suggested lineup says. Okay, it's got me leading off, Freddie second, Dell third, uh, Gonzalez and uh, uh, Rockfort, and then my brother David and Todd will be bringing up the rear in the batting lineup. So let's go. Again, this will be um, really the highest difficulty level I have ever successfully um, been successful at or had a good time at. Um, beyond this, it just is brutal. It gets brutal for me. I don't know what the magic number is or why, but. All right, here we go. Uh, it's a subtlety and difficulty that is remarkable for sports, uh, for a video game to be that um, nuanced, that nuanced in gameplay. Because I mean, we're talking about matching buttons, and timing, and uh, stuff like that. So you wouldn't think it was that have that much subtle nuance, but it really does. Damn, see, and right there, uh, we pop out. Uh, normally that pops out into the stands. All right, so Dell just had a brilliant season so far. We need him to drive me around, and I may steal if we get into the right pitching count. No, nope, that's a ball. I have to be more patient now, swinging the bat. Um, and that's the other thing you'll see. Uh, just tweaking up four points the difficulty, all of a sudden the CPU's smarter. It'll do things that it normally wasn't doing before. All right, Dell. So Dell gets uh, me to second. Now back to second baseman, number 20, Brentworthy Gonzalez. <laughs> All right. That's a ball. All right, Brentworthy is our best actual player. However, he doesn't represent anyone in my family, friends, or in the role-playing gaming community. So he's just a random body to fill out the roster. It turns out to be go, Jason. I want Jason to get home. Let's score a run in the first inning. would be so nice. All right. So Dell knocks me around, and Rentworthy does his job and drives in a run. And Camila, who's been very good. Oh, another great shot, but that's going to be caught. Now batting the right fielder. All right, my brother's up again, who's had a, a miserable season here at the plate. 
but a very good defensive player. And I don't know if he'll be back next year. He is very discouraged with us. He is, uh, yeah, he is a sour-faced. Um, his loyalties dropped a lot, so I have a feeling he will not re-sign with us uh, if the, the time comes. Oh, he almost hit a home run there. While I was while I was uh, hanging our dirty laundry out to dry here, he almost hit a home run. All right, so we started this career at 28 ego difficulty. Ego is difficulty. Pushed it up to 30, and I feel like probably I still have a slight advantage. I'm going to go as high as I ever have successfully enjoyed the game. And we are now at 34 difficulty midway through the season. And I think things should tighten up and probably be a lot hairier, especially if we get to the championship, um, which I'm hoping we can do here. So I don't play a lot anymore. I, I you know, I spent many years um, enjoying consoles all the way back to the PlayStation 2. I uh, played a lot of console gaming, especially football, racing, some RPGs. Um... And then the last few years, there was a period there where I literally had my game consoles in boxes in the closet, hadn't played them in forever. So you can see how much harder everything is. You just don't quite reach those those ground balls as easy now. So now ratings start to play a bigger role, and you got to be really quick on the uh, sticks. Oh, okay, he's a low pitch hitter. And we got to be careful with that. I don't want to give him anything low, but we don't want to be afraid to throw him good pitches either. And you can see now I don't have as much control on the quality of where the pitch goes. as oh no. Son of a bitch, they're going to take the lead. Um, well, it's 1-1, so Jose drives in a, a run in the first inning. Anyway, and I go through periods, usually in the winter, or when I'm uh, sick, like I've been this last uh, couple of years. Oh, man, a home run break. And they are a power hitting. They're the best power hitting team in baseball. So, in all the games that I've been able to... Um, ...share against this power hitting team, streaming, they have never hit a home run on me that I can remember, maybe one. And already we've seen a home run and they're up 3-1. So going up just four points in that difficulty is already made the game wardens a little more realistic to what they actually do. And that's that's what I want. I want, them, I want the teams to resemble what they should resemble when I face them. Um, without the game being a drudge or being so so good that you can't compete. Anyway, trying to make a point and while talking, him and shelled here. All right. Um. Finn Tanner. So I played less video games in the last uh, five years than I've played in my lifetime. Uh, however, I still enjoy them. Certainly in the winter, I enjoy them when I'm, you know, stressed or I have more time, you know, to do stuff. Or when I've been ill, um, and I just, uh, again, because I've been ill, I have more time, or I'm less inclined to engage in social activities. Um, anyway, uh, anticipating, uh, anticipating, um, uh, some games coming, like Starfield and, uh, I never would have tried this game. My brother uh, has been a fan of Super Mega Baseball since, I think, 2. Uh, as uh, he discovered it years ago on his PlayStation. And, and loved it. And had been talking, barking to me about how brilliant this little game was for years. And I think I've explained, uh, I finally tried it because it was available on disc. I could actually walk into Target and own the, the game on the disc. So that's when I decided to go for it. Plus it was in its fourth incarnation. EA Sports had purchased it. So I knew everything would be a little more polished the from the baseman, company. Number 41, David Savage. And uh, 
this is, has been the most fun I have had with a, with a video game, really, of any kind. The catcher, number 62, um, Todd Matt. I would say probably since a game called Front Page Sports Football back in 90. Back in 92, that was available on the PC on floppy disk, our uh, little three and a quarter inch discs. And it was the first football game that used a physics engine. You could build playbooks. You could actually build plays. And it was the first game where guys aged, retired. You would have a college draft every year. And we had never seen anything like it growing up. With literally. And, uh, this, that's how inspirational and how much I've enjoyed this baseball game. It has taken me back to a, to a uh, more innocent time, I guess, or to a time where uh, there was some kind of magic and mystery to this thing that we do. And, of course, with that, the inspiration to make players, make teams, uh, design leagues, and sit back and watch and see how they go out. The only other thing that's ever done that for me is tabletop sports games like Grid Zone, which um, uh, um, this has been almost as much fun to me as Grid Zone, the tabletop uh, fictional football game um, on the tabletop. And that's saying a lot because I played literally probably 500 games of Grid Zone, something like that, and ran a league uh, for 27 seasons. Um, not all of that was with Grid Zone, but most of it was in Grid Zone. So my point is, that's how much I could recommend this game, uh, even if you're not a baseball fan, just sheer fun and joy and uh, quality. The quality of this game in its uh, AI, in its, um, he keeps trying to bunt, he goes foul. The quality of the animation, although it is purposely stylized, which I did, the depth, uh, yet simple career, but the depth in which uh, you en it, it engages you through other means instead of feeling like an accountant uh, looking at charts and numbers and, and dealing with money and finances. It does these clever things to engage you in the team and in the players without it being like a, a ledger, an accounting ledger. Um, and we are just getting our butt stumped, man. It's three. Are we still? No, we're not in the... Um, anyway, I can wholly recommend this as a sports game. I wish there were more games like this. Hockey would be great. A soccer game like this would be phenomenal. And, of course, my favorite game of all uh, sport is football. I would love a football game that's this well done, this well crafted, really. And, again, I know uh, for many of, my, uh, many of my subscribers here on the channel, they're not sports folks. So, again, it uh, maybe sounds ridiculous to wax poetic about a, a, a sports title, but there are many, many types of video games, whether it's role-playing games or action games or shooting games. They would do well to pay attention to the quality of this title and how they do what they do. Let's put it that way. Um... You know, uh, it's 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 not only how well it plays, but how it looks, how it uses sound, announcers, music, how it uses music, which I have turned off, so we don't have any issues with YouTube. And how it allows you to make everything from ball caps to gloves to uniforms to you can't make stadiums, you only can pick from a handful of stadiums. But I bet you that's coming. I would assume the next step will be you can build stadiums. And we're going to lose to the Game Wardens again, unless Freddy can get us going. Yep, a rally from Freddy. So again, um, I can't say enough about this game. And, uh, you know how much I like a game when it inspires me to put my friends, family, colleagues, peers in it. Uh, because it's, some, it's, it's, it's a certain uh, level of joy that you just, you know... Uh, you know, you want to share, but you also want to enjoy this kind of thing in a, in a kind of a, 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 a whimsical, mis, a mysterious way, I suppose. You know? Oh my god, did Dell just do it? Oh, hello. Dell just tied the game with a two run dinger. 
Damn, Dell is definitely going to be. Oh, no, that ain't Dell. That's Ritworthy. So Dell got on base. Ritworthy. Um, hot damn. So Ritworthy batted me in to tie the game. Hot damn. So already you can just see how much more interesting the game is. Um, we both have three runs, five hits. I would say 34 is, uh, and we're both evenly rated teams. We're just different teams. They're a power team. We're a, uh, we are a, uh, well, I can't remember what the, the, the game gave us the title of the kind of game team we are based on our ratings. Uh, they're a power hitting team. And oh shit. Oh shit. No way. Come on, Freddy. Oh, he fell down. That's my fault. I hit the button. Oh, Freddie had an easy out there, and I fell down. That is definitely my phone. Shoot. I was trying to trigger the throw in and hit it too soon, and he fell on his face in the ball. That's sad. That's not Freddie's fault. That's my fault. That's pilot error, we call that. Anyway. Um, and just the way it... it uh, it asks you to evaluate players. The way it, the off season is brilliant. It's not a traditionally boring. Uh, you look at your money and you have to go out and compete against other teams to sign players. I mean, there's loyalty ratings which give them a, a chance to resign with you, and you can prioritize them and try to get them resigned. You can let them go. Uh, dang it, man, we are just not gonna. We're not gonna get it done today. Oh, we're gonna let somebody get to second because I tried to throw home. Oh, we can't do that. And you can even set how long you want the games to be. Uh, nine innings, uh, traditional length, or... Um, I like these uh, short four-inning games. They're fun, they're fast. And you can do just about any size league, any size schedule, with your own rules for the off-season, I mean, your own rules for the uh, pre uh, post-season play. Can totally customize the league, the game, to your liking. Okay, this time don't hit a button. Let's see if Lee can make the catch at the wall. Oh, we are just getting destroyed. Okay, it was time to take the pitcher out, and I'm too busy talking. So here's what happened. I turned up the difficulty four points. I'm not paying attention. I'm rambling on, and without my concentration... I have lost track of my pitcher's stamina, and they have destroyed me here. So we're going to bring in Morrow. Now pitching, now Morrow. So it's 8-3 to three because I'm not paying attention. I lost my concentration because I'm talking. So that sh should tell you the difference between 30, uh, 30 ego and 30-40 ego. I cannot imagine the guys who can play this on 70, 85, uh, the gamers that are playing this upwards in the 70s and 80s, even 90, I think it goes as high as 99. I mean, they must be, they're professional gamers. They must, must be all they do all day long. I don't, you know, of course, maybe when I was a young man, I could have, I mean, maybe age has got something to do with it, but. Uh, so just in tweaking about four points for this game, the game wardens have destroyed us. And that shows you the stamina, by the way. Uh, not noticing my pitcher's fatigue. He's not quite got the same velocity. He's not putting the ball right where I want it. And the wardens punished me for it. Um, and, of course, we're fielding now. Uh, fielding is much harder now. And that's usually where I struggle. Um, pitching and batting is natural in video games. But fielding a baseball and throwing a baseball isn't something that is uh, natural, uh, really, for me in baseball games. So, um, and we're a step slower on all this stuff than we were because of the difficulty. It's less forgiving if I miss the throw, and it is 9-3, to three, I don't believe this. The game wardens are whipping us. So just going up four points, it's now, uh, I mean, it's a butt whipping. So, all right, we finally got him out. Jeez, what an ugly inning that was. Well, they got six runs in one inning. 
and they got seven hits in that inning. That would beat us alone. That inning alone would have beaten us. Ah, oh, You know what? And I'm going to substitute my brother out of here. He's in a mojo slump. Uh, I'm going to bring in uh, my brother plays. So we're going to bring in Mathis. And hopefully Mathis here can get us going. Yes, that was a great shot, but foul. Damn it. But he connected with that big time. Nope. Easy out. We have to score six runs just to stay in this game. If not, it is over. Oh, another line drive right to him. Yep. Damn it. All right, Todd. Come on, Todd. Oh, right to him. That's it. Game over. Man, you can see how the, how the difficulty uh, changed everything there. Old school Grim lose. The game wardens get some serious uh, uh, re revenge on us there. Wow, that was ugly. And uh, Rentworthy, though, hit that two-run dinger that tied the game up. And then they have uh, Feather Anger and uh, Jeannie Botham both got... Um, wow, she had a home run, three RBIs. Home run and th uh, a triple. Gee, many Christmas. So their two ladies just spanked us in that. So anyway, um, so I had a period there in my, I would say, mid twenties to my mid thirties that I that I did a shit ton of the only kind of gaming I did for probably 12 years was video gaming. That was it. So I was no more tabletop gaming. There was no role playing in my life. Uh, I was very busy with my career and school. I was going to put myself through college. So the only escape, the only playtime I had really centered around video games. I could play with my buddies on the couch. My brother was certainly playing. Uh, my closest friends are video gamers. And, uh, uh, you know, we would even get together and uh, play on the couch. Or we could, uh, when I moved over here, I could, uh, I could log in and play with, talk to my brother long distance and play all day long on, a, say, a Saturday. We could, it didn't cost us anything, uh, you know, to do that. So it was better than calling each other long distances. We could enjoy head-to-head uh, -head games of football or something. So there was about a 12 or 15-year window there where uh, video games was really my only outlet. It was the only way I enjoyed gaming and then um, uh, slowly began to add actual role playing back into my life, actual tabletop uh, board games, etc. back into my routine. But anyway, with that said, I still enjoy it. I still dig them out once in a while. I still looked at what might be coming like Starfield, um, in the new Bethesda uh, space RPG. For those of you who don't know, Bethesda made Fallout and the Skyrim Elder Scrolls games and this is their new IP. And, of course, uh, this little baseball game so um, so inspired me and is so fun. I find myself playing a little bit every day now, which I wasn't doing for a long time. And uh, so, uh, fun. I'm not certain if 33 or 34 may be a bit high. I may have to turn the ego down. So this is why I was going up in increments. So I went from 20 to 30. Things were better. But I've jumped from 30 to 34, and things got out of hand real quick against the worst, uh, one of the worst uh, teams in the league. So I think what I'm going to do is now toggle that down to 32. That'd be a two-point increment, which is what I probably should have done. And now we face the newbie nightmares. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sim this because I'm not a big... Uh, I don't really want to play the newbie nightmares right now unless they make it to the championship. And we may not even make it to the championship now. Oh, man, the nightmares just spanked us. So two huge losses in a row for us. The team's slideshow projector is not working again. And you have some really great vacation photos to share. Who are you going to, uh, to put on IT? Well, my brother, again, if, uh, this, would, this would run my brother completely out of... Uh, it would run him so low that I think there's no way he'd re-sign with us. You know what? But my brother's really good with... Uh, uh, you know, he's a techno uh, geek, and he knows all this shit, and my brother's the perfect guy to ask to do this. So it's not so much that I want to alienate him. It's that who else would I ask to mess with this equipment and set it up so they can all enjoy my vacation photos but my brother. So this might be it, as his loyalty now is too. The media is asking who 
you thought lived up to the expectation in today's game? Who do you praise? Well, weren't worthy hit a home run. Oh, wait, no, today's game, which we just lost. I have no idea because I, I simmed it. Uh, they're close, though. Uh, that's plus 20-something loyalty to keep um, Dell or the A-plus second baseman and an outfielder. Rentworthy Gonzalez, is he, he's worth the rent. We know that, Rentworthy. And then there's Dell here, who is in a way, uh, you know, he's, uh, 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 you know, we're using his uh, company to broadcast uh, on television in this league, on YouTube. Oh, so we don't want to piss off the Ted Turner of our, of our, uh, uh, foot, our baseball team. So let's let's go ahead and uh, praise Dell. I have no clue what he did in the game because it could be really embarrassing if he like it was 0 for four or something. Uh, and we now have 393,000, so we're gonna be able to develop somebody. So let's take a look. Okay, there's new gear for Todd. There'd be a 25% chance he'll lose Signal Stealer. And remember, part of the fun here is you can increase their ratings, lower their ratings, but you can also gain or lose a trade. And I do not want Todd to lose his Signal Sign Stealer, so we're not going to spend money on Todd. Bot Farm. Uh, this guy could lose Volatile. Or he could gain Volatile. I'm not going to do that. Don't have enough for that. Don't have enough for that. Okay. Surgical procedure. Here we go. This is for George. Uh, an extra inch or two can make a big difference in the field. I bet it can. Uh, plus three arm. And he has a 15% chance to game sprinter. But he's 33 years old. Now, am I going to want... This is going to sound ageism a bit, but I don't think I'm going to want a 33-year-old guy around on the team long. So I don't know if I want to spend a lot of money on a 33-year-old guy. So I'm going to be a little... I'm gonna be a little uh, discriminatory here against age, ageism in the sport of baseball, and then a million dollar deal I can't afford. So really, it's going with a twenty, a thirty one year old second base shortstop. Uh, Muscles is a, a relief pitcher. Uh, surgical procedure for our shortstop was thirty three. I'm I'm not going to spend any money, and. Todd, I could get his power up, and we could gain the power with a 25% bonus. He could really gain eight points in power, conceivably, but he could lose his sign stealer. And that does help. Like the last uh, bat I had against Game Wardens, it told me that the pitch was going to be an off-speed pitch. So I knew that it was going to be a slow pitch, and that is huge. Um, so I'm not going to I'm not gonna chance messing up Todd's special ability there. Um. And we're in a slump, man. We've just had our butts handed to us twice, but we're still hanging on to the top slot. The game wardens are still in the, that third from the bottom, but they are climbing. So I'm not certain he's going to be in that, that seven-game championship at the end of the season, but uh, it's going to be interesting to watch. Let's go ahead and sim the CPU games. And, oh, man, Sam's team is hot. Oh, and Sam's team just spanked the game warden. So I'm afraid Sam... Oh, look who's at the top of the standings now. Sam's team. So Sam, Donnie, and Antoine, their team now, 14-9. and nine. They are at the top of the standings. We have dropped to a half a game behind them. And things are starting to get a little... Uh, more interesting here with the with my uh, difficulty turned up two notches. We may not even make it to the championship now. So let's look at our stats real quick. Um, let's go to my team. And let's toggle over to team stats. Oh man, and I think I can sort with that, right? That's hit. So Dell has the most hits on the team. Ripworthy's second. Freddie's third. David is fourth. I'm fifth in hits. Home runs, though. It's Rentworthy with six. Dell with three. Freddie with three. RBIs. This is hands down Rentworthy. 25 RBIs. The next closest on our team is eight. Freddie. That is nuts. So Rentworthy is definitely our cleanup hitter. That's what that means. He's bringing in those straws. Uh, you know, that that's telling me that our lineup is working exactly right. Guys get on base, and then Rentworthy brings them in. Pitching stats, okay. Wins, it's going to be, uh, again, Bill had it was undefeated until uh, the game wardens just shelled him. Uh, uh, Yellow is 3-2. and two. Uh, Muscles is 3-0. and oh. 
Jeff is one in three. Wow. And Alex, uh, Alexa Mesa is one and oh. Uh, not bad. Her ERA, though, gee, many Christmas is, uh, oof, Jeff is 6.62. So her ERA ain't doing too hot here either. Okay, let's go over and take a gander at the, uh, the team that's now at the top of the standing, Sam's team. So Antoine, um, let's see, uh, Donnie has four home runs, Antoine three. That's pretty good. Uh, hits, or RBIs, let's check RBIs. Antoine has 12 RBIs, Donnie has 10. So a little more balanced here for their team. They're pitching, though. Uh, Sam is 4-2 and two for them. Uh, Sabine is three and two, and Edwin is three and two, and they've had less pitchers involved. That's interesting. So their pitching staff, there's been less pitchers involved for them, um, as opposed to our team, which has pitchers kind of been in and out all year long. Let's go look at the game wardens. This is the team that I suspect would win it all, or at least uh, be in the championship, and they have. I won't say underachieved, but um, they have not been as good as I thought. Uh, Jose, five home runs, so he slowed down his pace in the last half of the season, or this last quarter of the season. Karen Kirk with four. Feather with a three. And Eloy, who had three, like, seven games in, has not had a home run in quite some time. Billy Sullivan. So Eloy, who was at the top of the home run hitters for weeks, or for, I should say, for games, is now slowed way down. RBIs, though, Jose leads their team with 15, but then Feather and Eloy have 11 each, and Finn with 10. So you can see the difference in our team with one man getting 25, and what this team is doing with all these power hitters, they're, uh, they're bringing in stragglers as a team, which is cool. Pitching, let's take a look and see what Anthony... So Anthony's still 4-1. Um... So Anthony's looking real good as a starting pitcher here. His ERA has actually come down. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's go back to that. Uh, Ivan. Ivan might drop. Is 0-3. I uh, don't know why that is. Brian is 0-2 but does have a save. So, again, not a lot here in their order. I thought Ivan and Anthony would be their two. I thought Ivan and Anthony would be the uh, two studs here. But for some reason, Ivan is not getting the same run support as Anthony must be getting in uh, when the offense is uh, backing up Anthony to some degree, it looks like. Uh, change team. And I don't think I have anybody else in the community or on any other teams yet. Um, I may start adding other people I remember and uh, think of onto some teams uh, as rookies. Wow, so we are definitely, and we've got some guys in the slump now, and we're going to go show no DH, suggested lineup. Okay, my brother's no longer slumping, um, but boy, is he not happy with us. Uh, Freddie's no longer slumping, Dale's not slumping, so we're doing okay. Nobody's slumping that's starting in this next game. And who do we have this time? We have the Newbie Nightmares again. They're ten and two. We're fourteen and ten now, so we have definitely been on a losing streak. Matter of fact, let's look at our schedule. Um, we won against the Norsemen, two zip. Then we beat the Norsemen five two, and then we lost to the Norsemen. I changed the difficulty. Uh, no, actually, we, then we lost to the Game Wardens. Anthony beat us at thirty, and then I turned up the difficulty to thirty four, and the Game Wardens shelled us. I turned it back down to 32 and simmed this game, and we lost again. So we have now lost, folks. We have now lost one, two, three, four games in a row. We are on a four-game losing skid, and we only have one, two, three, four games left in the season before the championship will be dis uh, uh, before the championship uh, series starts. So we are really in a tight situation here because we've already dropped out of the number one spot. So a couple of more losses, and we won't be in the championship. And that would be a sad day. And I am going to sim this Newbie Nightmares because I just don't really want to play the Newbie Nightmares right now. So let's sim this. Hopefully we can beat them. Who we do. We beat them 2-0, thank God. You're invited to a LAN party. Who do you bring as your plus one? Well, I am Jason, so I don't think I need to bring me. Uh, Kamala who's actually been pretty good for us. It would drive her up to a 99 loyalty. There'd be no chance we would lose her. 
So I've got to take uh, I've got to take uh, Camilla or Camilla, and that gets her way up to a 99 loyalty. Uh, Bro Boom wants a new face for their accelerated Kiwi campaign. Who are you going to suggest for their campaign? Um, well, I'm going to go with the B minus rated relief pitcher Rossi. My relief pitchers haven't done great for us, but I'm going with Rossi, and that gets him up to a 91. Now we play Call of Cthulhu. I mean, no, we don't. We play... There are nine games ahead of us. So let's see what happens. Call of Cthulhu wins. The Game Wardens win. The Nightmares lose to Call of Cthulhu. Dice Fantastics lose to the Wardens. What a season this is turning into. Oh, my God. The Wardens have won how many in a row now? Oh, but the Rules Lawyers put a stop to the Wardens' victory run or wins. Oh my land, the game wardens are going to work themselves up into the top four. Wow, Call of Cthulhu has gotten hot here, folks. They are now second in the league. No, Call of Cthulhu has climbed in the last week of games to the top of the tables. The Spectres, and we have hung in there in second. Dice Fantastics have dropped down to third. Game wardens have climbed from the hole. Up to a 500 team with a plus 12 differential. Things have gotten more interesting here late. We now have enough money. I might be able to develop somebody. So Todd, same thing for Todd. I don't want to buy that one. Bot Farm, I don't want to buy that. Okay, Muscles. You have to practice to make every pitch technically correct. The best kind of correct. Velocity, Junk, and it would go up. There's a chance he could lose his Meltdown. Uh, that's huge because Meltdown is a bad thing. We don't want Meltdown. So he has a bad trait. Just for bros, we cannot afford the phone upgrade. Plus one, plus one. And uh, so Ron, coming off the bench, could get some. Uh, he could improve here. Ron's only 25 years old. Plus a 10 percent chance to gain more contact. That's two hundred thousand dollars. So I could buy conceivably two. I could buy New Gear Day for Todd, but I don't want to gamble on losing Todd's ability. This is huge. It's only a 50% chance, but I could remove Meltdown from him, and he would gain you know, all of his pitching going into the final run of the season. All right, so we need to roll below 15% to lose that Meltdown ability, but we're going to gain plus one in all three types of pitches, so that's awesome. Come on, baby. Drop that Meltdown. Yes! Son of a bitch! So that's a good two hundred thousand dollars spent as Leonidas. He is getting tuned up for the potential championship series if we can hold on to that spot. That is two hundred grand well spent right there, folks. And I don't have enough money to spend anywhere else. Holy cow! All right, so line up. Okay, Lee again. So Lee's no longer slumping. I'm no longer slumping. I'm actually going up. Bravo's tight. Gonzalez has definitely improved. Uh, so we only have David, who's currently his mojo's down, right? And they call it mojo. So that's mojo up, mojo down. It's, it changes on every single play. It can change on every single play. So for some reason, David's mojo's a bit down. Uh, and wow, our pitcher just shredded. Uh, Lionitis, who was undefeated. Uh, I don't know if he still is. Let's look. Is Lionitis still undefeated? 3-0, and yeah. So on top of that, he dropped his meltdown factor, which is brilliant. So our pitching, pitcher working on his abilities is getting uh, better here. And we got the Rules Lockhorns. Now, there's no one I'd rather beat than the Rules Lockhorns because I don't like rule lawyers in gaming, guys who are flipping the book open, arguing with everybody. So they are 10-15. and 15. There are only two games left in the schedule, and uh, I don't know if we can even fall out. So if we lost the next two games, we'd be 15 and 12. If Dice Fantastics won the next two, or the Game Wardens won the next two, it's conceivable. Uh, we're plus 14, by the way. So it uses run differential to decide tiebreakers. So if we lost the next two, we can be 15 and 12. Dice Fantastics could be uh, 16 and 12, and that would knock us out, right, if we lost the next two. Right? Am I right about that? 
It's a 28 game schedule. We're on 26 to 28, so we only have two games left. How is that? Do we have? Maybe we have two games in the next. Uh, how the hell do we only have? How do we only have two games left out of 28? No, we have three games left. One, two, three. Okay, we have three games left. That's really bizarre. So uh, Jeff's starting today. Then Bill, and then our ace would be starting here. So we can't afford, actually, to sim these. Um, because it's too tight. It's literally too tight at the top, so I have to play these games. So we're basically playing for our playoff lives. I mean, that's what's happening here. Man, and I really need David. Uh, that mojo being down could be huge. So I need David to, to right the ship as fast as possible. All right. Anyway, I don't know if this is anything remotely fun for people to watch, but um, I just had to share this. This game is so fun, so unique, and it has really interesting elements that make it roleplay-esque and also create um, narrative. Uh, play to find out, we like to uh, talk about in gaming. You know, this is what this reminds me of, right? Play to find out. So I went back down two points from 34 to 32. I think it'll be a little more doable for fielding. It's the fielding portion of the game that gets so difficult that all of a sudden you can't field the ball well enough. And as you saw against the game wardens, missing a few of those balls here and there are created a huge discrepancy. So we'll see. Uh, And in all these sports games, uh, moving players around a sports pitch is generally the hardest thing to do in these games because of the uh, perspective and because you're uh, one of so many people on the field. You know. Wow, I just earned a trophy, Sir Immaculo. So I just struck out three straight pitchers and earned a trophy. That's brilliant. Yeah, I'm a trophy whore. I like to score trophies in my PlayStation. Uh, oh, come on, brother. Did he start us off with a dinger? No, but off the wall. Go, go, go. Get to two. My brother lounging at two. Hot damn. So he's come out of his slump just in time for the, the most important period outside, uh, outside of the championship itself, getting to the championship. Oh, I should have swung at that. Damn it, Jay. Oh, and I should not have swung at that. Fortunately, Lee was out of trouble of being double played. Okay, Dale, you need to bring my brother in and give us a lead here early. Come on, Dale. Shit, that was a great pitch. Oh, no, he popped up, but I might be able to tag up. Go, Lee, go, go, go. Nope. Got us. I thought I could. I thought I could cheat the, the baseball gods and steal that base with my brother, but that uh, didn't happen. So Jeff ain't gonna be happy. I could hear Jeff cussing me in the dugout, dude. I can't believe you sent your brother on that pop up. Are you crazy? Uh, Jeff. Jeff. Would, he's a competitor, dude. I've never known anyone as competitive as Jeff in my life, and uh, it's a good thing. Uh, Jeff is very competitive, but I could just, he would have been he would have been barking at me for that or barking at our coach for that. <laughs> oh shit! Especially with him pitching, right? I mean, I just I just took away a run that would help Jeff get the uh, victory here. It makes it harder for Jeff to pitch a good game without help. Uh, seeing how quickly they've got a man on. Uh so there are a couple of role-playing type games that remind that this reminds me of that I love. And I've shared before on my channel in the past. I think I've shared them. I don't think I've shared it yet on Dell's channel, but it's coming. And uh, it's a turn-based RPG. But again, you create, it, you create your characters. Um, it's a brilliant... Um, it's called role, roguelike, meaning uh, every time you start a career with characters, the game is randomized and changes every time. So it's inf you can play it infinitely. Uh, and it reminds me a lot of this in its look and in its kind of humor. 
Uh, it doesn't take itself too seriously, but it is an amazing strategy game, turn-based RPG. And I will be sharing that here soon, too. Freddy, make that play, Freddy. And then a poor throw in. Don't go home. Don't you dare go home. I don't believe it. Shit. So Fred made the play, but I was too late throwing the ball in. I didn't get enough power in the throw. So I'll be sharing that is uh, that style of, of video game, which I really dig. Oh, poor Jeff. He's going to be madder than hell, man. I would not want to be in the dugout when Jeff comes back. <laughs> when he comes in after this inning. Uh, he ain't going to be happy, dude. <laughs> Jeff, uh, Jeff went on, um, started his life, his career as a, uh, uh, in one, in one career, and ended up, um, becoming a, uh, school, not school teacher, well, I guess he is a school teacher, but he, uh, became a, a school teacher, and has spent the last 30 years in, uh, school districts as a school, uh, as a teacher, and, uh, I think with his master's degree in education. Anyway, and he became a coach, mostly girls uh, baseball, um, excuse me, girls basketball and uh, softball, and uh, girls softball, girls basketball, wrestling, all kinds of things. And I coached football with Jeff. Jeff was a head coach. I was the defensive. When I coached football, Jeff, uh, I was the defensive coordinator for Jeff, the defensive coach. But Jeff won a couple of state titles with the girls' high school basketball team in the state of Colorado. So Jeff is very, always was. When we were growing up, Jeff was always about sports, always about uh, organized sports. Uh, but he's turned into a fantastic basketball coach, a winner, champion. And, of course, has played adult baseball, I think, all the way up until he was just too beat up. To, we all get too old and too beat up to keep doing this stuff in the wreck. So, that's a little bit about Jeff. But, uh, and I would argue, uh, probably learned as a child, as a kid. Uh, again, Jeff and I are only a couple of months apart in our age. We're quite literally two months apart, I think. Um, I wasn't a sports kid, and Jeff, Jeff, uh, you know, being my closest friend as a kid, turned me on to watching, I think he watched a little football, talked about sports, but I began to recognize sports through Jeff's passion for it. And that's, uh, you know, uh, so I, I was not, as a, as a young kid, sports-minded at all, as far as strategy sports, or even really interested as a, as a, 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 a kid that had a chronic disease. Um, sports was not something I was thinking I would ever even do, much less being, oh, I threw it the wrong. God damn it, Jason, I messed that up. So we're about to lose the rules lock arms while I ramble on about stuff here, but that's okay. Um, anyway, so Jeff kind of turned me on to, uh, and my oldest brother, Lee, who's on this team, really, because my father's not a sports guy, so I didn't get any sports stuff from my father. Uh, it was my brother that tweaked me to tabletop sports games and actual sports, playing sports. My brother and Jeff were the most influential on me in sports. And uh, I can't imagine my life without those two people and these influences. I, you know, I love sport and uh, it's influenced me to make table, my own, develop and make my own tabletop games that are sports based. So that's how important those things were to me and those people are to me. Uh, role playing now. Jeff, I think Jeff was outside of me finding that D&D &D in the closet at seven years old or whatever it was, eight years old. It was Jeff bringing home, I think, Moldvay or Mincer from Books and Comics. The red box, the first red box. I saw that before I bought it. And then I ran down and immediately used my allowance to buy it. And uh, that was that was it. From there on, at 10 years on, we were playing D&D. So I can't even say I would have bought Mincer probably if, if Jeff hadn't brought it home and showed it to me. And I went, oh shit, I gotta get this too. And uh, 
that's friendships. I mean, those are the kind of things you need to grow up with, the, whether they're siblings or really close friends that you have the opportunity to grow up with. And their influences, friendships always create influences and positive. Generally, hopefully, uh, unfortunately, sometimes they can be negative, but I can't say that my friendships were ever negative. Um, so. Yeah, Jeff, hell, Jeff even gave me a chance to coach football. I would have never had a chance outside of our flag football team that I uh, I actually sponsored and paid for when we were playing flag football, uh, organized flag football. That was my team. And I did some coaching that way, but they were peers. You were coaching your teammates. Um, there is no doubt that uh, that's, that was kind of a dream fulfilled. Jeff gave me a chance to coach uh, football and, and coach what I love, defense for kids, 12-year-old 12, uh, 12 kids, which was an amazing experience uh, working with kids and teaching them football and how to tackle. And I wouldn't trade it. wouldn't trade it. We're going to lose this game, damn it. It's not Jeff's fault. I haven't been paying attention. Again, the difficulty just up two notches. You can't afford to fall asleep on the CPU. It will punish you for any mistakes. And that's what we're looking for, right? I gotta be focused. I gotta be in the zone. I gotta be immersed, right? Autotelic. I gotta be autotelic here and get into the zone. Nice. Two strikes in a row for Jeff. Beautiful. For a while there, Jeff was leading the league in strike-to-walk ratio easily. And we needed those two because we have got to score three runs to win this game. Good job, Dell. Dell gets the final out. So this is it. Bottom of the fourth. If we don't score two, the game's over. We need two or three. Three wins it, and we don't drop a spot in the standings. So we need Freddie here to start us off strong. Come on, Freddy. This is basically it, buddy. Yes. Hot damn. Freddy got a shot. Now, game tying run is at the plate. Ah, George. He's stimulated. That's his trait. Stimulated. George, we need you to get a man on or drive a man home. I don't need you to mess up. Oh, shit. Let this be a home run. No, it's going to be an out, but Freddy... Holy shit! We tie it up with a two-run dinger. One more run and we win, folks, and that's going to be huge. Jeff's going to be thrilled with that as we just, we may have just bailed Jeff out of a loss. Oh, drop, 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 drop. We can win this ball game. Oh, brilliant. Go to second. Get in, get in, get in, get in, get in. Oh, I went too far. They got us going to second. Ah, what a two-run deer got me excited. Now I'm not thinking. Todd, see, we would have won. That that last hit, if I'd have stayed at first, we'd have a man on first and second. Jeff with a chance to be his own winner here. He can actually, and Jeff has great power. Jeff really is a two-way player. He can be a pitcher and a player, but in this I just made him a pitcher. But Jeff really should play a, uh, a fielding position as well. There's a chance for Jeff to win his own game. Shit. Nope. Popped up. Great power, but I think I just tied it up. No, we got one more out to give. Damn, Jeff almost hit a dinger there to win the game for himself. All right, my brother's up. Who's finally out of a slump, but he, uh, he is, uh, he's at two loyalty. He's not happy. And that's going to end the game right there. I mean, that's going to end the inning. Damn it. We're going into extra innings for the first time all season, folks. And Jeff's stamina is waning. I'm going to let him pitch at least to this guy. We'll see how it goes. So we're into extra innings for the first time. One mistake and we could be in deep trouble. Come on, Jeff. Get another K. Get another K, buddy. 
damn, he got a piece of that. Jeff had pitched untouched there in that whole series. Got him. Sit down. Jeff just K'd another man. Hot diggity. Jeff wants to win this bad. I can see it. Arm hurts. His elbow's swelling. But he wants this. He wants to get to the championship in our first inaugural season of the RPG Cafe Baseball League. Holy shit, back-to-back -back K's. Jeff is hot. Jeff is hot. I think there may be a couple of golf games that are similar to this, too, that really are, they feel great, they play great. That's it. Now, we gotta get a run and we win. Uh, but I don't haven't played them, haven't seen them, but I know there are some golf games that have the kind of unique look and kind of fun, but... Oh, right to the shortstop. Come on, Dale. All you need is a double, buddy, and we're going to win this ball game in extra innings. Nope. Oh, shit. Two in a row to the shortstop. Rentworthy, who is probably going to be our team MVP. That's it. Man, we're into the sixth inning now, folks. Yeah, I gotta bring Jeff out. I can't let him get hurt. He's pitching tired, and I can't let him... We gotta bring in our muscles. We gotta bring in our best relief pitcher. Possibly our best pitcher. He's 3-0. and He shrugged off his meltdown trait just in time to get to the championship series. Uh... Remarkable little narrative shaping up for the league and for our team here going into the final weeks. Good job, muscles. Now center fielder, number seven, Kai Little. Wow. We got a hit there, man. So our pitchers aren't letting us down here. But our bats have been quiet. Power pitch, high and inside. Oh, I blew it. It's wild. Oh, shit. Got him. All right, we need one run, damn it, and we win. Come on, Freddy, drive in a run, buddy. Nope. Shit, line drives to the shortstop in second. That's a pop-up. So the 32 may be perfect. 32 difficulty might absolutely be perfect. 30 was a little easy for me. 34 was a, a little hard. I may have found the perfect difficulty. Ego 32. And there it is. Bang, bang, bang. Unbelievable. Seventh inning. <sighs> what a game, man. I think the rules lawyers are desperate for a shot at working their way in. If other teams choke, working their way into the championship. If the newbies and the rules lawyers made it to the championship in year one, I would be very disappointed in our league. Uh, I don't want to see the newbies or the rules the lawyers in the championship. 15, and uh, the rules lawyers have given me the best game I've had in the entire season right now. In our in three extra innings here. And it would figure, because if anybody's a pain in my ass in uh, the role-playing hobby, it's rules lawyers. So why shouldn't they be a pain in my arse here to get to the championship? The shortstop, number 57, Leonard. David, two stops in this inning, and that'll wrap up that inning. We just got to get a score now. Todd, right, Todd can also 
There it is. That might be the game winner. Todd may have just hit the home run to win the game. Todd, Mac, our GM for Joth using OSE, Todd, and the artist, the artist formerly known as, all right, brilliant. Todd has just won us the ball game, 4-2. to two. Thank God. We had 10 hits in that game. That was hard fought. And Jeff got the muscles, ends up with the win. He's 4-0 and with two saves. Jeff's 1-3. and He ends up with a win because he pitched so many innings. Is that crazy? Poor Jeff. But Jeff ends up with five innings pitched, three hits, two runs, ten strikeouts. So Jeff gets third man, and Todd, of course, hits the game-winning home run, two RBI home run to win the ballgame for us in extra innings. So Todd is the first man of the match. That is brilliant. And I'll probably stop it there. This is this video has gone on quite some time. But let's go ahead and see what the manager moment is. Who is on dirty hamper duty this week? Oh, my God. Well, you don't think I'm going to put Leonidas, who is our best pitcher. It's got to be Quentin with a 95 rating. Quentin's doing the dirty laundry. Oh, Todd or Blanchard. Oh, there is no way I'm going to make. Uh, okay, I just farted in the locker room, and I'm going to blame it on somebody. Well, I'm not blaming it on Todd. I'm going to blame it on George. Uh, so George is not happy. George probably won't be back with us. I have $156,000. There will be no player development probably that I can afford for that. No. So I don't have to make any tough decisions management. Um, there are two CPU games on the board here this week before our next game. Wow, the Nightmares won big. And the Dice Fantastics beat Call of Cthulhu in a one-run game. Folks, this is coming down. Uh, this is huge. Look at that. We are a half a game above Call of Cthulhu to be number one in the league. We are 16-10. and 10. They are 16-11, and 11, having just lost to Sam's team, the Dice Fantastics. Look how close this is. Um, with two games left... It's conceivable we could slip to third and not get in the championship. Uh, the Dice Wardens could win the next two. No, they're done. They're, they have their 28 games. The Dice Wardens are finished. The Dice Fantastics only have one game left. Oh, my God. So we play Call of Cthulhu and Dice Fantastics. So we are in charge. No, we have the rules lawyers. Oh, so we play the Rules Lawyers in the final three-game series. I didn't know that. So the Rules Lawyers, let's see, if I lose both of those, we would be 16 and 12. If the Rules Lawyers won both of those, they would only be 12 and 16. So they can't, they're dead last. They can only get above the newbie nightmares. So is there a chance for us to fall? The Dice Fantastics could go to 16 and 12. We could go 16 and 12. The Call of Cthulhu could go 16 and 12. Very dangerous. I got to play it because um, I cannot afford to end up out of the championship because we lose one extra game. Um, if I lose, I'm going to lose playing. I'm not going to lose simming. So I am going to stop it there, and hopefully I have time tomorrow. I will uh, play the, the remainder of the season. And, man, nobody is slumping that's going to be starting this week. So David, of course, isn't starting this week. Uh, the reason for that is uh, Cleverly is at first base. That's because he's facing a, a left-handed pitcher probably. not, Or it could be because his mojo's down. That could be true. Todd is also going to be on the bench uh, for this next game. So, uh, fascinating. We're going to be playing without two of our two of our real leaders uh, for this next game. It's got to have to do with the pitcher more than anybody. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this has been enjoyable. Good day.